For the continuation of our topic in Lesson 2, here are the following tools and equipment needed in preparing appetizer. Mortar and pestle. It is made from either porcelain or wood. The mortar is shaped as a bowl. The pestle generally shaped like a small club. It is used to forcefully squeeze ingredients such as herbs against the mortar. Nut cracker. It is used to crack or open the hard outer shell of a various nuts. Nutmeg grater. It is a device used to grate a nutmeg seed. Pastry blender. It is used to cut pastry ingredients such as flour and butter for blending and mixing while they are in a bowl. It is made of wires curved in a crescent shape and held by a rigid handle. Pastry brush. It is used to spread oil, juices, sauce, or glaze on a food. Pastry wheel. It is a tool which is used to cut, shape, or mold pastry. Pastry wheels come in a number of forms from cutters which are designed to produce uniform strips of pastry to pie crimpers. Another tool for preparing appetizer, we have potato masher. It is used to crush soft foods such as cooked potatoes or mashed potatoes or cooked apples for applesauce. We also have poultry shear. It is used for dejointing and cutting uncooked meat such as chicken. Rolling pin. It is a long rounded wooden or marble tool rolled across the dough to flatten it. We also have sieve. It is an instrument with a mesh or perforated bottom used for separating cores from the parts of the loose matter and for straining liquids. Another tool is slotted spoon skimmer. It is a white shallow wire mesh basket with a long handle used for removing hot food from liquid or skimming foam off when making broth. We also have spatula. It is a handheld tool that is used for lifting, flipping, or spreading. It can also be used to scrape down the sides of pots or pans. Tin opener. It is used to open tins or cans. Tomato knife. It is a small serrated knife used to slice through tomatoes. Tongs. It is used for gripping and lifting. It is usually used to move items on hot surfaces, such as barbecues, or to select small group items such as sugar cubes or salad portions. Trussing needles. These are long stainless steel needles threaded with the twine and used to truss food. They vary in size, usually from 4 to 10 inches in length. Whisk. It is used to blend ingredients smooth or to incorporate air into a mixture in a process known as whisking or whipping. Another cooking tools in preparing appetizer, we have wooden spoon. It is used for mixing and stirring during cooking and baking. Another tool, we have zester. It is a special kitchen tool that is used to shape bits or strands from the outermost layer of covering on citrus fruits such as lemons, limes, and oranges. By adding this layer to a row or cooked foods, the flavor of the food being prepared is enhanced with the oils of the fruit. 
cleaning, sanitizing, and preparing equipment and utensils to be used. Utensils are the lifeblood of any kitchen. They are used to assist in the preparation of hot and cold food. When an investment is made in a full utensil set, it is important to make a certain proper care. The importance of proper cleaning can be appreciated when one realizes that contaminated equipment is a major cause of foodborne disease. Cleaning comprises many operations in the food establishment and the process is usually specific to the type of cleaning necessary. No cleaning task in the food establishment is as important as the cleaning and sanitation of the food contact surfaces of equipment and utensils. There is a big difference of cleaning and sanitizing. When we say cleaning, it removes food and other types of soil from a surface such as countertop or plate. While sanitizing, it reduces the number of pathogens on that clean surface to a safe level. To be effective, cleaning and sanitizing must be a four-step process. Surfaces must be cleaned, rinsed, sanitized, and allowed to air dry. Now that you know how to avoid cross-contamination, let's take a closer look at cleaning and sanitizing in part five. Some crucial points in this segment include the difference between cleaning and sanitizing and why it's important, washing dishes by hand and using a commercial dishwasher. Cleaning and sanitizing are not the same. Cleaning uses soap and water to remove dirt and food from surfaces, while sanitizing uses chemicals or heat to kill germs. Remember that surfaces that look clean may still have germs that you cannot see. Sanitizing reduces these germs to safer levels. Food contact surfaces should be washed, rinsed, and sanitized after each use to remove germs that can cause illness. Chemical sanitizers must be mixed following the label's directions and soap should never be added to sanitizers. Use test strips to make sure the sanitizer is not too strong or too weak. Change the sanitizing solution often because grease, dirt, and food particles make the sanitizer less effective. Store wiping cloths in clean sanitizer. If you're washing dishes by hand, all dishes and food contact surfaces must be washed, rinsed, and sanitized between uses. The procedure for washing dishes by hand is as follows. First, clean and sanitize the sink. Then, scrape leftover food into the garbage. Wash dishes in hot, soapy water in the first sink and rinse dishes with clean, hot water in the second sink. Sanitize by soaking the dishes in the third sink filled with warm water and an approved sanitizer. Always air dry dishes. Towels can breed bacteria if left wet. You may have a mechanical dishwasher that will wash, rinse, and sanitize the dishes. You need to know that the dishes are reaching correct temperatures for sanitization. So temperature gauges and sanitizer levels must be monitored. If you have any questions, speak with your person in charge about proper dishwasher operations. Many of the same basic practices for dishwasher use at home apply to commercial dishwashers, yet don't be fooled, the stakes are high to get this right. To get the cleanest dishes, start by scraping leftover food from the dishes, then stack dishes in dish racks. Do not stack dishes on top of each other, as this will not allow water to circulate properly. To keep them from filling with water and dirt, glasses, cups, and bowls should be turned upside down in the dishwasher. Plates and flatware should be stood up edgewise. Dishes should be allowed to air dry for one to two minutes before removing from racks. Just like towel drying is not acceptable for hand washing. It's also not used for dishwashing. Towel drying could contaminate the dishes. Inspect all items coming out of the dishwasher. 
Are there spots or stains? Are all dishes and flatware clean and free of food? No soap should remain on any dishes. Chipped or cracked dishware must be removed from service. After dishes are clean and dry, handle and store them correctly to minimize possible contamination. Don't touch the surface of any glasses or plates that a guest's mouth will touch. Cups, bowls, pots, pans, etc. must be stored upside down. Handle silverware and other utensils by the handles only. Always store kitchen utensils at least six inches off the floor in clean, dry areas. Here are the facts on cleaning and sanitizing. Cleaning and sanitizing are different. Cleaning uses soap and water, while sanitizing uses chemicals or heat to kill germs. Surfaces that look clean can still have germs. Sanitizing reduces these germs to safer levels. Food contact surfaces should be washed, rinsed, and sanitized between each use. Follow the label directions on all sanitizers. Never add soap to sanitizer. If washing dishes by hand, use the three sink method to wash, rinse, and sanitize dishes. Store bowls upside down and store utensils and dishes at least six inches off the ground. Never touch a part of a dish or utensil that a guest's mouth might touch. Keeping your home is really not that hard once you get over the mountain of getting it all organized and clearing out all the clutter. That's the first step, in fact. You need to get into all your closets and all your cupboards and your drawers and on all your countertops and surfaces in your entire home and find a place for everything. Once you find a place for everything, it's, it's really easy to keep the home. I mean, it only takes a few minutes every day and you can just wipe things down and there's nothing you have to move out of the way. And, and plus you can find all the things that you need when you need them. You don't have to waste a whole bunch of time looking for things. So it's a good thing, but it is going to take time and it is going to be a lot of work. So if you can bear with me, and you can come through my home and I'll show you how to deeply clean each and every nook and cranny in your home and get, get control of your whole environment. You're going to have a very, very easy job ahead of you after that is mastered. So if you can bear with me and work with me on this, I think we can do it. We're going to start in the kitchen because the kitchen is the heart of the home. It's where we cook all of our meals and the family gathers together. So I want to show you how to organize and clean, deeply clean the kitchen. And right here I have my pie plates and my bowls and they're all organized real nicely in my cabinets. And now I know right where to find them when I need them. One way to organize spices in your kitchen is to buy mason jars or use old ones that you might have laying around the house. It looks really nice on a shelf like this. I did this several years ago and it has been a real beautiful display in a kitchen. So um, I made little labels for each of the jars and I put a piece of packing tape over the top of them and that makes it so that the labels don't wash off. If you want to clean your jars off, the labels don't get all cruddy. So I just put all my different spices on the rack here and, and I even put them like that in my cabinet. I'll show you. Now it's time to get started. We're going to take everything out of each and every one of the cabinets. Now don't overwhelm yourself. You don't need to do every cabinet in one day. I mean, it's nice if you can get it out of the way, but some of us have a lot of other things to do in a day, so just pick one cabinet to do each day. This is my spice cabinet. The first thing I need to do is decide where I want everything in my kitchen. For now, this is where I have my spices, and I think I'm gonna keep them here. This is a good spot for them. You have to make that decision for yourself. The first step is to remove everything from the cupboard. When cleaning in a kitchen, you need to think about grease, because there's a lot of grease. You're cooking and the grease gets in the air and it sticks on your ceiling and all your light fixtures and all your cabinets. 
and even inside your cabinets too because sometimes you have your cabinets open and the grease gets in there too. So you want to use a nice degreasing solution like I use just regular dish soap and I just squirt that in a bucket and I add hot water and then I cleanse my surfaces. When cleaning a kitchen you need lots of rags. I just have these old yucky rags, it really doesn't matter. Just dip it in there, the solution, and wring it out good and start cleaning. You want to get into every nook and cranny. So I just take my rag and I wipe right inside of all these little places and the outside as well. And I wipe the walls down. Here on this side of the cabinet, you want to wipe off your doorknobs and, and gently scrub the entire door. Fingerprints leave grease spots usually around where people open up cabinets. A lot of times you'll see it on the inside of there. You want to scrub that off really nice. And a lot of times you'll see, this is where we get a lot on these white cabinets. The, um, the boys will open up a cabinet and there'll be like black dirt all the way around there. So I just take the, um, the rag and just clean all the way around. Get that all done real nice. Now it's time to put everything back in the cabinet. When you're putting things back in the cabinet, make some decisions on where you want to put things so you know where to find them. I like to put all the spices that I use when I'm cooking a meal, I like to put those on one shelf. And all the ones that I use when I'm baking something, I like on another shelf so that when I'm going to bake or cook, I can go there and find exactly what I need when I need it. But before I put it on the shelf, I want to take a damp cloth and wipe it all off so it's nice and clean. It's all done and it looks so nice. Come and see. Now that we've finished cleaning up one cabinet, which only took me about 10 minutes, there's many more to go. But I want you to focus on cleaning one cabinet at a time. If, if it's too overwhelming to do the whole entire kitchen in one day, just pick one or two cabinets to do in one day. And eventually, after several days, you'll have the entire, all the cabinets cleaned out and all your drawers cleaned out. Make sure to look for crumbs in your drawers, vacuum those out and clean those out and put everything back in. And soon enough, you'll be ready for the next step, which is detailing the appliances and the light fixtures and the walls. So stay tuned until we get back together next week for another lesson on cleaning and keeping your home. things that we tend to neglect in our kitchen is our small appliances. Our microwaves, our toasters, our blenders and mixers, and they just need to be deeply cleaned once in a while. And if we do deeply clean them, they won't need to be cleaned for a long time if we simply wipe them off after each use, which only takes a few seconds. So I think we can do this. All right, I've got a few little tools that I like to have in my arsenal when I'm cleaning these little tiny appliances. I like to have toothpicks and Q-tips and little um, dental floss things that can go in little holes and crevices. I have little plastic scrapers for hard cake down things. Steel wool or a non-abrasive scratch pad. I also like to make my degreasing solution with a little dish soap and some water using an old rag. To get started, we're going to use our homemade cleaner, which is half water, half vinegar, a little castile soap, and a little essential oils. And we're going to spritz the entire blender with this solution. Now, we're going to dip our scrubby pad in there and start scrubbing all the yucky stuff off. Obviously, 
Honestly, we cannot get into all of the tiniest cracks with our scrubby pads or our rags. So we can use our little toothpick at this point and get real close into all these little tight spots. Just like that, just kind of scrub away and take your Q-tip and you can blot it away. See, it's like perfectly clean when you do it like that. All right, and then you can wipe it over with your handy dandy washcloth. Using this little dental floss tool, I'm going to go into the little hole, just kind of rub around in the little holes and get those all cleaned out nice. After you've worked all the dirt out of all the little cracks and crevices, just wipe it all down with a dry dish towel and shine it all up. Looks like brand new. When you're ready to clean your toaster, have a garbage can available. Because there's this little door on the bottom of every toaster that you can open up and release all the crumbs that are built up inside of the toaster and then you won't have it all over your countertop when you're cleaning it. Give your toaster a little shake. Get all the rest of the crumbs and turn it upside down. And shake, shake, shake. When you flip the toaster upside down, you can see all the built up grime inside of here. Just take your little plastic scraper and scrape all the loose debris away. Take your non-abrasive scouring pad or your steel wool and get it a little damp and just start working off the, the grime on the top. Now just spritz it with your cleaner a little bit on the whole outside and take your dish towel and just wipe it all down till it shines. We use our mixer a lot so there's a lot of grime that builds up and food splatters on it so I want to get this deeply clean. That's going to make me feel really good. So I'm going to remove the bowl here, spritz the entire outside of the machine, including the cord, off. And I'll start using the uh, non-abrasive scouring pad and running over all the different areas with that. I'm going to lift this up to get the grime that's underneath here that splatters up. This is fun. Use a little Q-tip and get into all these little little crevices like that, it just comes right off. If you spray it real nice first. See how clean you can get it? Last step is just misting it down with the cleaner and with your dish towel, just shining it all bright again. Go down the cord, because sometimes food spills on the cord. And then you have yourself a very new looking appliance again. Voila! When we moved to this house, we did not clean the microwave. I left it dirty just for you so you could see how dirty it was and how clean we can actually get it. So I'm excited to clean my microwave today. We're going to start with a glass microwavable bowl, two cups of water, a half a cup of vinegar. I do not like the smell of vinegar. I know some of you do not either. Just add a few drops of essential oil to give it a fresher smell. I'm using lemon oil because I want to have it be a little bit of a degreasing solution as well. Lemon oil is great for degreasing. So now we're just going to put this into the microwave. We're going to microwave this bowl of vinegar water for three minutes. Leave your microwave door closed for five additional minutes so that the evaporated water can permeate all the walls and loosen all the dirt, oil, and grime that's in your microwave. All right, it's time. Make sure to test your bowl. Make sure it's not too hot to touch. 
and remove it from the microwave. Taking a non-abrasive scouring pad, just simply wipe off the grime. It comes off real easy. Microwaves always have a removable tray. So just remove it, bring it to the kitchen sink, and wash it off with some soapy water. Lastly, we need to spritz it all down with our natural cleaner over the control panel and the door and everything. And then just wipe it down with a dry dish towel until it shines. Now just spray the outside and wipe it all down. Wow, this is great. All my appliances are so clean. I was so excited to cook again. Now go clean yours. Can you name the tools and equipment needed in preparing appetizers? Thank you so much class. That's all for lesson two. I hope you familiarize the different tools and equipment needed in the preparation of appetizer. Thank you and be safe.